Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. I just finished assembling this 400 watt DIY folding suitcase solar panel. Now, if you remember a few weeks ago, I tested a bunch of 200 watt solar panels to see which one was the best performing for the price. And it ended up being the Calson 200 watt bifacial Topcon solar panel. So now I have two of those assembled together in this folding suitcase design. So if you're looking for an excellent solar panel that's easy to move around your yard, that's durable, it's gonna last a long time, you're gonna wanna see how I put this together. Now let's go and do a brief walk around so you guys can see the design and how it's put together. So you have the two 200 watt panels, there's a hinge at the top and a hinge at the bottom that hold it together and allow it to fold. Now if we walk around the back, you can see there are two kickstands. Now these kickstands actually fold up tight against the back of the solar panel. Now these are a kickstand designed by Ben from Minuteman Solar. I've actually been using his kickstands for over a year on this 1200 watt array and they work so well that I also wanted to use it on a portable design. So I'm using his kickstands. If you wanna learn more, I'll include the link to them down in the video description. Now I only wanted to use two of them. So here in the middle, I have a latch that holds the top tight and keeps it kind of flat here. So let me go ahead and fold everything up so you can see how it works. Now it's really hot outside today, so I have gloves because these black panels get really hot in the sun, but to fold it up, it's really easy. So you just come on the back here, loosen the latch, then you're just gonna tip it up. And I like to kind of just fold it like this so it doesn't fall over. And then you just loosen these wing nuts here on the kickstands, fold that one up, that one's done. Loosen the wing nut here, fold it down, move the wire out of the way. Okay, and then you can just fold it up. So you can see it's super compact. So you can easily store this in your garage, in a shed, on the side of your house, against a fence until you wanna use it, or you can just use it all the time like me. But it's much more compact and it's pretty easy to move around. Now building this solar panel took me less than one hour. It's really easy. Let's start with the hinges. So there are two hinges that hold the solar panels together. You can see the first one right here. Now I picked these up at Home Depot. They were around $3.50 for two of them. So one is installed here and the other one is installed at the bottom there. Now what I did is I basically just clamped both solar panels together and made sure they were flat. And then I drilled out the holes for the rivets and riveted it in place. So there's two rivets on each side of the hinge. And I did that same exact process on the bottom. I drilled it out and then riveted the hinge in place. And it definitely seems durable enough to fold and unfold and support the solar panel's weight. Now, what about the kickstands? Well, they are fully adjustable and they are telescoping kickstands. So you can use a bunch of different solar panel sizes. So you have these latches here and you have two of them that extend out. For this small design, I don't need to extend the legs, but for these panels here, which are much taller, I did extend the legs a little bit. Now the legs attach with this foot here, which basically attaches to the solar frame. It wraps around this. There is a bolt that goes through the pre-drilled hole on the solar panel frame itself. And that tightens up within you know, a couple seconds. And then you have a bolt that goes through and attaches the leg on, and then you tighten it with this wing nut. So within two minutes, you have the leg fully attached and it is adjustable. I'll show you that here on this solar panel leg because I have it already loosened. So you can see there are a bunch of teeth here that kind of allow it to lock into a specific angle. So let's just say we're gonna lock it flat. So you can see that it interlocks all the way around and then you just tighten it up with the wing nut and then it's secured in place. Now, once I tested this out for the first time with the two kickstands, I quickly found out that there was a problem. Well, it would not sit straight. You can see that it's angled down here in the middle and so instead of using four of the kickstands, I wanted to come up with a more simple solution. So that's where I came up with this latch idea. Well, now I've lifted up the solar panel so you guys can see the latch that I've installed. Now this is gonna be a little bit difficult because I'm holding the camera and holding the solar panel, and I'm also gonna try to latch it up or at least get close to it. So just have patience with me with the camera for a minute here. Okay, so I did the same thing. I basically had this latch, I picked it up at Home Depot. It's around $3.50 for two of them. And I just pre-drilled the holes and riveted it in place. Now what happens here is this latch, when you latch it down, basically just pulls this together and it's just like one rigid piece instead of kind of buckling down and making a V. 
Now with the latch connected together, you can see the solar panels are in a much straighter line. It's much better than what it was when it wasn't latched and you had a big V right here and both solar panels were facing different angles. Now one last note here, for installing this latch, you do have to remove the plastic protectors that are on the corners. I'll show you that right here. So they look like this, they just pop right off. They're not glued on or anything. I do like that this solar panel has those on it, but in order to install the latch, you have to remove them. Now, another reason why I love these Calson 200 watt solar panels is the output voltage. These have a voltage open circuit of 27 volts. So when you put two of them together in series, the voltage doubles and is right under 60 volts. So if you have a power station that has a 60 volt charge controller, these two solar panels connected in series is the perfect combination for charging that power station. Now just imagine you had multiple sets of these suitcases. You could have two or three to wire together in parallel and really max out the input on your charge controller for your power station. Now what about wiring these two solar panels together? Well, I wanna do a brief demo of wiring them together in series, and then we'll do a demo of wiring them together in parallel. Now there's a benefit to each one of those. For a series connection, the benefit is that you get double the voltage and your amperage stays the same. And that's a benefit because most power stations have a 10 amp or a 15 amp input limit on the amperage. And so it will limit the amperage and you won't get full power if your solar panels are producing more amps. When you wire them together in series, you get double the voltage and your amperage stays the same. And so typically you can charge faster with a series connection. Now wiring solar panels in series is really easy. You take the negative of one solar panel, you take the positive of the other, and you connect them together till they snap. And now your solar panels are wired together in series. You basically get a positive output, which is the male, and then you get a negative output, which is the female. And these will connect up to your solar charging cable on your power station. And it's that easy. You connect these up and your power station will start to charge. Now you just have to take note of the actual voltage. Remember when you wire them in series, your voltage doubles. So you take the voltage open circuit and you double it and that's the peak voltage. Now I have a whole video on this that I'll link down in the video description if you wanna learn more about series and parallel wiring. Now what about parallel wiring? Well, most power stations don't have high amperage input limits. So parallel wiring isn't that common. It's mostly common for charge controllers. But what you need is you need parallel adapters. So these are parallel adapters. You have these here, which take two positives and output to one. And then this one here takes two negatives and outputs to one. So let me show you how this works. You take a negative of one of the solar panels, connect that in. You take the negative of the other solar panel, connect that in. And so you've just wired both negatives together to combine into one negative. For the positives, it's exactly the same. You take the positive of one solar panel, plug that in. You take the positive of the other solar panel and plug that in. And now what you've done is you've combined the solar panels together in parallel. So what happens is the voltage stays the same. So the voltage open circuit is gonna be the same and the amperage doubles. Just keep in mind that your power station, if it has a 10 amp input limit or a 15 amp input limit, well, now that we've doubled the amperage on these, it's gonna produce around 16 amps. So your power station will not be able to use all 16 of those amps. Typically charge controllers allow for a higher amperage input limit. So wiring these together in parallel on a charge controller would be just fine. Well guys, just like that, we had a ton of clouds roll in. So it looks like we're gonna get some afternoon thunderstorms, which I would totally welcome because it has been so hot. So I know people are gonna ask me, Jason, you've been recommending the Zoop W 450 watt portable solar panel. Well, this panel is awesome, but it has its use case. This is more lightweight, it folds up smaller. So I'd say this is more for portable use and temporary use because this doesn't have glass. This has an ETFE coating, which is a plastic. Plastic breaks down over time. Now in my testing, it's taken at least two years of everyday use for ETFE to break down but it does happen. Now, if you wanted to have a longer lifespan out of your solar panels than just two years, then you'd wanna go with a glass rigid panel. So if you plan to use this every single day to charge up your batteries or your power stations, I definitely recommend going with a glass solar panel. So that's the advantage of this. Yes, it's bigger, it's heavier, but it's gonna last a lot longer and it's gonna hold up better in more severe weather conditions. So hopefully after watching this video, it gives you a couple ideas on making your own 400 watt suitcase solar panel. 
I love these kickstands and I really like the design with the hinges and this is just kind of a simple design. It's really easy to put together. Like I said, it only took me an hour to do this, but this is not an original idea. There's a lot of people that have built these. This is just kind of my take on building a suitcase solar panel. The reason I wanted to do this is because I found these Calson 200 watt bifacial solar panels using the Topcon cells. The voltage combination is just really good for 60 volt power stations. So what I'm thinking is I'll probably build another one of these and then I can use these to test power stations in my videos that have the 60 volt cutoff. So I think this is gonna be an excellent option. Kind of a bummer that I didn't get a chance to test it today. It actually looks like it's gonna start raining here in a minute. So I gotta finish this up. If you guys have any questions about this, make sure you leave a comment down below. And I will have all the parts that I've used in this um, project down in the video description. Now, Ben did send out these kickstands for me to test. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Ben. And make sure you check out his website where you can purchase these so you can learn more. Guys, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you guys in the next one.